Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now if you've been watching my channel in the past, I have had the opportunity to review some Kubi knives. So working with the people at Kubi Knives, I got my hands on this mini pocket knife. This was the first Kubi knife that I had an opportunity to review. But then I got my hands on this small Damascus gentleman's folding knife. This tiny little pocket knife is absolutely beautiful. Nicely constructed, excellent features, just has a really cool look to it. And after this, I really started to enjoy Kubi products. I knew that they had some really nice stuff that they were manufacturing and I was kind of keeping an eye on them. So as I moved forward, I wanted to get myself a new Kubi knife. And so looking at this tiny little karambit style knife here, this is the KU-151B. Now there's also the FDM-065B, which is very similar to this, but with a Damascus blade. Now this particular knife is D2 tool steel and has that interesting sort of karambit style blade. Now to me, even though this is a very small knife, it has a lot of good overall utility purpose. And so after taking a look at this small Kubi knife, I was going back and forth with the people at Kubi about their KU-166. So one of the most recent Kubi knife reviews I did was on this beautiful fixed blade, the KU-166. And what caught my attention was the overall quality utility capability of this blade. Now I typically like fixed blades, but the bottom line is day in, day out, I don't always carry a fixed blade. But without a doubt, no matter what, I have myself a folder. And that's where the KU-212 comes into play. Now this KU-212 has that similar sort of utility shape, that karambit looking blade that you get on this smaller knife. Now I have used both of these quite a bit. This KU-212 has now been my daily carry for about three weeks and I have greatly enjoyed this knife. But when I went to buy this, I realized there was more than one color option available and I really couldn't make up my mind. So what did I do? I bought all three. And I thought today what we do is take a look at the overall fit and finish, get an impression on this knife, and see if this could be an option for you. So if you're interested in seeing these KU-212 Kubi knives in a little bit more detail, do me a favor, stay tuned. So now as we get into it, the KU-212. Now as I mentioned, I have been carrying this knife for a few weeks now and I've greatly enjoyed it. So this particular model here, having a D2 tool steel blade, which if you've been watching my channel, you probably realize I greatly enjoy D2 tool steel, G10 handle scales, and a titanium pocket clip. Now the green one here has been my daily carry. I have not necessarily been carrying either of these. So the green having a sort of satin finish blade, this black G10 having a satin finish blade with a blue titanium clip, and then the coyote here with a black clip and a sort of two-tone black and satin blade. Now all three of these were awesome combinations. Like I said, I really couldn't make up my mind, so I got all three, and I just decided to use this green as my daily carry. So you'll see at this point, it's a little beat up. It's had some use, but I have to say, this has performed extremely well. I like the overall blade shape. It has been extremely good, and I'm saying extremely good at general slicing tasks, different things like opening packages, and even I have used use this to eat my lunch. It's been great. This thing is so slicey. It's incredibly sharp, has a wonderful edge, and is just a great overall utility shape. So taking a quick look here, you will see that this has an overall length of about eight inches. The handle right around five inches. The blade, an overall cutting edge of around three and a quarter inches. So a nice size, in my opinion, for your general EDC tasks. 
Now, for some of you, this may be a little bit on the larger size. Personally, I like a blade just about in this size range. For me, where I typically enjoy a fixed blade, I do tend to like a slightly larger folder. Now, it has to strike a balance. It can't be too big. It can't be too cumbersome. I think this is kind of in that sweet spot where it's really a little bit of a larger blade, gives you good utility purpose, has a little bit of reach to it, which I like, but at the same time, it's not horribly large. In terms of the thickness here, you'll see that it is a reasonably slim profile. Not a super thin knife, not a super thick knife. It's just kind of nice. Kubi reports the blade thickness at 0.16 inches and the overall handle thickness at 0.53 inches. Now this does have a liner lock. So you'll see here the liner lock and it's a flipper design. It is very smooth. It performs extremely well. I found this has great action. It's not like the most ridiculously snappy knife unless you give it a little bit of a flick with your wrist but it just has a good solid thwack. Zero play whatsoever on the blade. It's good and solid, and this does have ceramic ball bearings. So I have not pulled this apart, and I have not looked on the inside to really verify that, but I can tell you it is very smooth. So as you look here, it has a little bit, you know, it's not really kind of like flapping in the breeze, but you'll see that it does really react quite easily to little motions and closing the knife. So an overall comfortable knife, nice deployment, nice and responsive when you flick it with your wrist, good quality thwack, and an excellent lockup. So as I look at the lockup on the liner lock, I'd say it's roughly a quarter of the way into that stop. So a good overall lockup. Now one of the things I do find with Kubi knives, they all have a double click. So it's hard for you to hear that, but I'm going to go slow. That's one, two. All the Kubi knives that I have tested, one, two, have that sort of double click. One, two. Now that's certainly not a problem. I'm just bringing it to your attention. So if you do get your hands on a Kubi knife, you'll know why it has that click. So now getting a little further into the construction, I'm going to use this here in the Coyote in black to show you this little separation in the color. Now there are steel liners on the inside, so the actual steel liners with that Coyote spacer in the back, you'll see that it is a full spacer, has a little bit of a pattern on it, which is pretty nice. Now looking at it, I do love in this Coyote how they have the black and the two-tone finish and the way that liner just kind of pops on the inside of the handle there. They've done a beautiful job with the hardware also being black and then also the liner lock, the clip. Everything about this, in my opinion, I love the way this looks. I also enjoy the black but I think it would be really cool to also have a black version that's almost completely blacked out. So I would love to see some of the hardware used on this Coyote version also offered in a black G10 model. And even if it still had that blue clip, I don't know, I'd rather go with black. Black on black with black hardware, the black blade, and then that little two-tone. So if you can almost picture this blade being installed onto this knife, I think it would look really cool. But aesthetics is one thing and performance is another, and the performance to me is very important. Now in terms of the overall comfort, I do very much like the way this feels in my hand. I have seen some reviews on this particular knife stating that they believe that the way it fits their hands, this little hook here and the space you have between the flipper and that sort of back pommel area is a little tight for their hands. I can understand that and I respect that decision and that opinion, but for me personally, it fits my hands very well. I find as though I index on this knife beautifully. It's very ergonomic and the thing is for my hands, and I have approximately a large size hand, it just is natural. If you look at my grip and the way when I grab the knife, it just naturally lands right where it needs to, so it's comfortable. 
I generally don't like a thumb ramp on any of my knives, but in this particular case, it works. It's comfortable, it feels great, I really like it. I also found that I can kind of get up on the blade a little bit more. Now, I'm a little bit lackadaisical. I'm not the most careful when it comes up to kind of rubbing my hand and my skin against the blade. I kind of don't care. It doesn't bother me. My hands are rough enough that it doesn't tend to cut me. So I do find that I've actually been able to get on some different things, doing a little bit of work, choking up a little bit, and kind of grabbing the front end of that flipper there. And it hasn't really bothered me. So I think you have a nice overall comfortable knife good overall size of the handle I don't mind that little hook it is definitely a personal preference thing so you need to decide if that's something that would work for you but it does work for me and I like it I like the overall milling and contouring of the handle I think this has a nice aggressive look it's really cool where it's just a kind of badass looking knife. I mean, there's other knives out there that are somewhat similar. And overall, I think Kubi kind of fits right in that style where it's a good quality, affordable knife, but it has nice overall features. So when you're talking about the D2 tool steel, the G10, you end up with a nice spacer, a titanium clip. This has ceramic ball bearings. It's an overall beautiful knife for a great price. And I think the overall performance of this knife definitely lends itself to a good hard use knife with nice overall edge retention. This thing is so slicey and after all of this use, it is still razor, razor sharp. So I have not yet used the Coyote blade and so the factory edge, day one is like ridiculously sharp but what about the knife that I've been using for three weeks look at that I mean I haven't I haven't even touched this up and it is so ridiculously sharp that edge is awesome so that tells me I love the grind angle. I love the geometry. I like how this overall performs. This has absolutely just ripped through everything I've thrown at it. Has had absolutely no problems at all. Now I do need to say that you have to have a specific intended use for a knife with a blade of this shape. It's not the easiest if you're trying to get down and flat. That's the problem with a knife like this, with a shape like this. It has this big hook that at the end of it all, you end up with a lot of space beneath it. So you have to either work kind of off the edge of a table and be able to kind of get the blade a little bit flatter. You're never really going to get a good flat and straight cut. You kind of need to draw the knife a little bit more and use that sort of tip end of this. So that's one thing to consider. The overall blade shape does not lend itself to a lot of types of tasks, but it's great in other aspects. I like the ability to just cut through things. It's been perfectly fine for food. You just gotta kind of draw the knife through it. That's fine. It's ridiculously awesome for opening packages. So if you're somebody who's opening a lot of packages or boxes or you work in a shipping or receiving type of scenario, this knife might be absolutely perfect for you. So this D2 tool steel has a reported Rockwell hardness of 58 to 60. It appears as though I've done a wonderful job with the heat treat and has excellent edge retention. And so the pocket clip is the 6AL 4V titanium. You'll see on this green model, this one's just a little bit beat up, a little scuffed up, not a big deal. I have been carrying this in my pocket, rubbing up against things, doing yard work, different tasks throughout my house. And the fact of the matter is the pocket clip is going to get beat up. And in this case, it certainly has. But as I slide this down and inside my pocket, you will see here that it's not a deep ride pocket clip by any means. A little bit of the top of the knife sticking out and that is just fine. In my particular set of pants here, you'll notice that these are tactical pants and have a little kind of knife pocket built in. These Blackhawk pants here are actually pretty sweet, so side note, something to pay attention to. But because of that, it actually works out better that I can get on the knife and I have a little bit of meat to grab onto. So I have enjoyed that aspect about this Kubi knife. So all right guys, there you have it. A quick look at the Kubi Knives KU212. And as I mentioned, 
I couldn't make up my mind, so I decided I was going to buy all three. And I love each and every one of these for a different reason. I think they all look awesome. I have enjoyed this very, very much. Kubi, you've done a great job with your knives. You've done a nice job with your overall fabrication. The D2 tool steel is wonderful. The overall construction, fit and finish, and the comfort in the hand is something that I have greatly enjoyed. So for the rest of you, I strongly suggest taking a look at Kubi knives if you're looking for a good overall quality knife, but that's something in a mid or budget range, it's definitely a great option. I think Kubi's been doing a great job. I like their overall selection, blade shape, sizes, material choices, and they've been very responsive. I've had a good time working with Kubi on other products, and like I said, I wanted to support them, and when I saw this KU212, I just knew I had to buy all three. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.